What's up guys, I'm Nomadic. Today in this video, I wanna show you exactly how you can take a drum break that you find and how you can make it really thick and hit really hard. Sometimes you find drum breaks and they sound good, but the kicks aren't really booming, the snares aren't really snapping the way you want them to. And it can be kind of frustrating because, like I said, it sounds good, but it's not, the sonics aren't really hitting the way that you want, want them to. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can chop it up in Ableton Live to your liking, but also layer it up so it sounds exactly the way that you want it to. All right, so I'm in Ableton Live right now. And right now, um, I have a drum break pulled up. This is actually one method that you can use to do this. There's a couple ways. This is probably the most straightforward way. This method I'm gonna be using is just keeping the drum break the same, kind of keeping the rhythm the same. Um, not really a rearranging it too much, just keeping it exactly the, the way that it sounds. So I'm in Ableton right now. This drum break right here is already the way that it was when I got it from Discogs. I just downloaded it and threw it up in here. It's already warped. If you wanna know how to warp, I have a different video on that, but I'm not gonna talk about warping in this video because it'd just be too much. So this is fully warped. The BPM is 129. So I'm just gonna right click, I'm gonna crop it. So right now, all we're working with is the drum break, right? So this is how it sounds on its own. Which sounds good, but in my opinion, I feel like the lows need to be uh, boosted a little bit more and I kind of want to hear a little bit more crack in the snare, personally. So we're gonna layer this up right now. Drag and drop in a drum rack so it knows that this is a MIDI track. And then what you can do is you can go to the drum break, drag and drop the clip into drum rack, and then what it does is it automatically converted. It's crazy how automatic Ableton is. It knows that you're working with drums. It basically automatically took the kicks, the snares, and the hats, and it converted it all into MIDI, MIDI notes. So if I were to take mute this track and then go into the drum rack and actually drag and drop drums onto C, D, and F, the rhythm is gonna be the same as the drum break. So let's do that really quick right now so you can get, get an example of what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna go to my drum kit, put in a kick at C1, and then D1, we're gonna put a snare, and then F sharp one, we're gonna put a hat, So then if you play it back, it's gonna sound like this. And of course, it's not always perfect. You need to go through and actually make changes so it, so it actually fits, meaning that you're gonna to wanna to delete all the snares that aren't at the right points. Okay, here we go. So that's basically the exact drum break, but with other drums in it. So obviously the key to this method is you wanna have the original drum break playing, but you wanna find drums that fit the original drum break that complement it. So you're basically like building it up, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to this and I'm gonna just hit zero to mute all the drums. And I'm gonna play the original break back and then try and slowly uh, bring in drum sound that complements it, right? So we're gonna start with the kick drum. Okay, so I'm gonna bring the kick in now. And that sounds good. Um, I think it's a little bit strong. I mean, depending on what you want, what your tastes are. This one, I would probably lower the volume. If you hit Alt and you click and you scroll down, you can see on the velocity meter down there, it goes down. So I want the velocity to be like, maybe like 70, 70 or so, just so it's balanced. And then with this drum, what I would do is I would just go to the kick and I would probably just filter it down just so it's not as like punchy. Cause the other kick, the kick in the break is like already kind of like, you can hear, you can hear the kick already. It's like there's more high end, there's more top end. It just needs more bottom. So in that case, what I would do is I would just click the kick right here in drum rack and then you can add a filter on top of it which basically removes all the top end and it, it all, you, all you basically are left with is the low end. So 
I'm going to click filter right here and this is the filter button so you can adjust and choose whichever one you want so this one is basically a low pass filter because it curves to the left meaning that when you drop the frequency just imagine like if you're looking at an equalizer basically the cut is going to drop is going to go down lower so that that cutoff is going to is going to drop and it's going to become more and more muted so as you can hear if i play it alone when i drop the frequency it becomes more bassy and this is essentially what i want to do i want to add more bass to the drum break already so if you play them together you're going to get more of a full sound And you can play with the filter style. And you can decide, hey, maybe you don't you don't want this kick drum. Maybe you can try, you know, a different one. Maybe this one will work better. So you just literally just replace it and then see how that goes. I think that one fits it pretty well. I think that sounds pretty good. So now let's do the snare. It's pretty sharp. It's a pretty sharp drum sound, but again, I'm just gonna lower the volume of the snare so they're about equal. You can also lower the velocity overall with this knob right here. And then we'll do the hat. I think there's too much variation in this pattern. So what, what you can do if you want to just make it more consistent, but just for this MIDI clip or these, these MIDI notes in general, if you hold alt and you bring the volume up of all of them, so they're like hitting the top of the velocity meter. I mean, this makes them all exactly the same. So this is kind of overkill, but if you drop it down, they're like all at the same level. You see that right there? But I want to like I want a little bit of variation, so I'm gonna hit Control Z, and then I'm gonna do it again, holding Alt and scrolling up. So I get some of them hitting the top, but not all of them. I would say like that's good. Most of them are at the top, and then I would like kind of like scale it back. And that's good, but it's a little bit too loud, so I'm gonna turn it down. And there you go, there you have it. That's the drum break basically layered. So you can turn this off, just see what it sounds like without it. And honestly, it sounds pretty different. By on its own, it sounds pretty different. Like we really, you know, added some stuff to it. So alone it sounds like that. And with our layer, it sounds like this. And again, if it's too much, you can just play with the filters. So like the hi-hats, you can just filter them down as well if you want. But yeah, it really beefs it up. Or you can high-pass the hat and turn it down. But yeah, that sounds pretty good to me. That's that's basically the easiest way that you can you can do that. Like if you want to make it sound exactly the same. Now, if you want to take the break and you want to actually chop it and kind of like rearrange it, what you can actually do is this is super 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 quick method. Um, create a new audio track and just resample exactly that layer that you made. Mute this. And then you want to go to resampling and you want to basically just record exactly what Ableton is playing just purely by itself. I think this is just four bars. So now if you go right here, 
you you have your new break your new layered break it's already put together it's already made and you don't really like you don't there's nothing you have to do it's done so you have four bars right here make it four bars long and then you can do the same thing right click crop sample and then there you go it's done it's ready to go ready to be chopped so now that this is done the next step in this process is to take this break and chop it up in ableton live so if you want to learn how to chop up breaks or just chop in general, watch this video. You're gonna be able to learn how to do it really quick. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you later.